Hello and welcome back and uh, this is a Wisecam V2 and uh, I think I've damaged this one as well so um, basically I put 24 volts on the 5 volt USB input so uh, this one doesn't work anymore but it fails in a different way to the Wisecam pan so I'll plug it in now and show you so it's plugged in and powered up and there's no lights on the front and there's no lights on the back but I don't know if you can hear there is a hissing noise coming from the uh, microphone it's a very quiet hissing noise and uh, pushing the reset button does nothing so we'll take it apart and uh, see if we can see what's wrong so on the underside of the unit there's two screws here I'm assuming if you take them out we might have a bit of success in trying to get in this so them screws have been removed and I had to pry this plate off so again you've got the plastic clips that clip in the little lug around the edges and that's inside it so I believe this panel here comes off again. It looks the same where you have to fries it open. So I'll give that a go now. So this bit of plastic here was actually quite hard to get out. I think it had a little bit of glue in there or something, but it didn't quite peel out as easy as the bottom cover. So that's that off. You've got the speaker in there and you've got the first board in there with your Wi-Fi module and your flash and your memory. So, uh, we do have some more screws on this board, so I'll take them off and hopefully this board should lift out. Down in this pillar here, there is a screw. And I think if you undo that, the whole assembly will lift out. So that screw is undone and this should just come out. Oh, I've got to disconnect the Wi-Fi cable. That is all loose now. Right, so undoing that screw, giving it a wiggle and disconnecting the Wi-Fi lead. That has all come off, and we're left with this module. So this is the module itself, and ribbon cable going over there to some more stuff at the front here. So we've got the camera, the IR LEDs, SD card reader there, and then inside the sandwich we actually have the camera board there. So I'll have a quick look at this and see what I can find. So a closer look at this board, and I think the first thing we should do is check it's got power. Well, this side, there is nothing power related. So we've got the um, input here. And then turn it over. We've got the three inductors surrounded by a chip. So I'm assuming that is a, some, buck regulated, red, some buck regulation going on. So uh, we'll have a probe around there. Plugged it in, and this area of the board got very, very hot very quickly. So it seems to be more sensible than this uh, inductor, to be honest. So I'm, shoot I'm just going to check these caps and see if they are shorted at all. So I've removed this device here, and this is the device that has failed. And this is a uh, DC DC converter, but it's three of them in one. So it fits here on the board between these three inductors, and that explains why you've got three inductors there because it's a three in one buck converter. And that part is an EA3036C and I've also found this very useful diagram so there's this diagram here and it shows me what the voltages are and where they're meant to be and also what the other components are in the circuit so I have an idea I got some of these buck converters and these are the ones that are used in the Wazecam pan and I'm thinking can I use these, these are just single converters can I use three of these to fix this board if I look at the data sheets, you can see here that's the device, and it's the same pinouts roughly. So it's three converters in one, and down here somewhere we have the calculation for working at the output voltage, which is here. This is the calculation for working at the output voltage. And if we go to the other type of converter, this is the one using the race cam pan, the calculation is, I've lost it, uh, summary, yeah, there it is. Nope, that's inductor selection, it's here. So I reckon they're the same rough calculation, so can I just fit these instead? It's gonna require a little bit of a modification. So what I was thinking of is gluing three buck converters down here in this space wire them up to the inductors so all I really need is wires across the inductors for the 
switch signal and the feedback, power, which I can get from the pins here, and I think that's it. So uh, we'll give this a go. So I've got the three butt converters glued on the board here with just some two-part epoxy aerodite. I'll put them on upside down so the pins are in the air to make it easier to solder to and also so I don't short to the ground plane because the only thing, if I put it the other way around, the only thing stopping the pins from touching the ground plane would be the silver screen. So I've had it inverted so I can solder directly to the pins, some wires, and then put it to the relevant places across the inductors and the power lines. So I'll just wait for this uh, epoxy to go off and then I'll start soldering it. So I've uh, added in all the wire flying leads onto the uh, new butt converters. Now it was quite tricky, especially this uh, these leads here on these these pads. They're very very small and you need very fine leads. But effectively got three butt converters wired up to replace the three butt converters that were in that one package. And I've just wired them to the power coming into the USB here to save space basically on the because uh, it wasn't I was very very tiny, very very crammed on that footprint. So we'll stick it back together and it works and see if it works. And I made up this sheet to show you the pinout of the device so you can wire it in. So I've got these sections here. Here's one converter, another converter, and then these are the feedback and switch outputs of the other converter. And then this is the side where you've got the one inductor and then the two then the two inductors up here. So you got this side for that inductor, this side for that inductor, this side for that inductor. As you should be able to tell on the board, it goes that way around. So you've got two inductors this side, which match the diagram there and there, and the other inductor this side, which goes this side. Hopefully that's somewhat clearer, but I'll leave that up on the screen so you can copy it if you need to. Well, I've powered it up and disappointed. Pointingly, it doesn't seem to work. It does make a buzzing sound, and you can hear the uh, IR shutter trying to go. So I wonder if I've done, if I've done more damage if them uh, butt converters went actually short when I plugged it into 24 volt. But still, it's worth a go. Um, I'll have a think about it. But for now, I shall see you later. And uh, don't plug 24 volts into your camera. <laughs>